Hello everybody. Um, this is this video I want to talk about the Q Society of Australia's um, Halal Certification Schemes um, article. So you can find there, I'll put the website link in the box below, but you can find them at www.qsociety.org.au um, and they have an article there about halal certification schemes and they've got some, they've got a petition at the moment to try and um, to demand proper labelling. And so the idea Essentially, the Q Society is, they build themselves as Australia's uh, leading anti-Islamic um, organisation. Um, and essentially, they seem to be full of Islamophobia. Um, in particular, so the Halal Certification Scheme um, issue, they've, the idea here is that over the last several years in Australia, much of our food production industry, which um, has issues with Halal Certification, um, halal have become halal certif certified. Um, there's two main factors for this. Uh, there is a small push by the Islamic, the two percent of Australians who are Muslim, to get halal certified food available in Australia. But the big push is that a lot of our food is now export, or uh, we are trying to export, and a lot of our near neighbours and export markets are uh, Muslim countries, and therefore a lot of the food processing needs to be halal to be in accordance with. Um, the cultural practices of those countries. Um, now, in some industries, this has meant that, say, in abattoirs, my understanding is that sometimes it's relatively complex to have halal and non-halal processing lines, or perhaps it's the the quality standards involved of making sure that the halal stuff and the non-halal stuff don't become mixed up. Um, and so my understanding is that in some abattoirs at least, um, it is easier simply to process all food as halal, um, regardless of which market it's going to. Which means that, um, broadly speaking, there's a lot of halal meat in the Australian market compared to the small number of m Muslims who live in Australia. So, what the Q Society is saying is that in um, a lot of these, say those abattoirs, are halal certified. That is, they pay an external agency uh, to audit them and to approve them as being in accordance with um, uh, with Sharia law, and that they, and in return, they need to pay fees to that company to get the usage of the halal certification uh, symbol on their food, and that because they're paying this money to these certification agencies. Um, this will impact on the prices of their food and therefore us non-Muslims living in Australia are paying a hidden Islamic tax on the food that we buy. Okay, so far so good. Now, there's several big problems with this. So they point out on their website that um, there are large numbers of process, food processors within Australia who are Islamic certified. So they say the four main dairy companies, 75% uh, of poultry suppliers, 60% of sheep abattoirs, 50% of cattle abattoirs, etc, etc. Now this tells me one of two things. Um, it seems to me that there is only a few reasons why you would become halal certified. One is to access an overseas export market or possibly because that 2% of Muslims within Australia are spending big. Um, either way, you would become halal certified only in order to access more a larger market. Um, and in doing so, you would expect a return on your investment. So if you'd spend money on the certification process, you would expect that to produce dividends in terms of an increased market, and therefore because you're selling more, you can reduce your costs. Because you can reduce your costs, you can sell at an overall lower price. That is, you would expect that your company would be more profitable if you would become, well, you would expect that these companies would only be um, halal certified for long periods of time if that was profitable for them. And if that is profitable, it would put downward pressure on their prices. Um, as they point out, there is no 100% halal certified abattoirs. Um, well, sorry, it's not 100%. So there are abattoirs out there that are not halal certified. Those non-halal certified abattoirs are competing with the halal certified ones. And if the halal certification was an onerous or a large cost of doing business, then those that weren't halal certified would easily be able to outcompete them and would drive them out of business. So what we can deduce from the fact that a large number of them are is that it is not particularly onerous on the business. And because it's not putting a large cost impact on what they're doing, it's almost certainly not resulting in, a, in any kind of price impact that we would notice. 
So from a purely, you know, are we non-Muslims paying significantly more for our goods and services because of our certification? I think that is strictly true. The beacon cannot be true. I mean, you talk about journalists like Simplot, Unilever, Nestle and Kraft. Um, these large multinational um, corporations, it is probably simpler for them to, to produce everything as halal so that they can export it to any region of the world without having to worry too much. Um, and these large economies of scale is part of what makes our food so cheap. Now, as I said before, they, the Hugh Society have actually made a video about this in conjunction with a website called halalchoices.com.au, which I'll also provide a link for. Um, so I'm not sure if they are completely separate or whether they're part of the same organisation or something. I'm not quite sure what the relationship is. But on the Halal Choices website, they make some strong suggestions that um, we should be objecting to these Halal certification because this is putting money, money from the food that us non-Muslims are buying is going to these Islamic organisations. And the, so the strong suggestion there is that we don't know what that money is being used to fund and that it's probably being used to fund Muslim activities, which I suspect is code for terrorism. Now, if there was any truth to this, um, Australia has very strong uh, funding of terrorism laws, and these kind of organisations would be could easily be prosecuted under those. So if there was any evidence, um, I would expect the authorities to be involved and that, that happened. Now, I'm not saying that absolutely doesn't happen, but I'm saying that so far I can't imagine that they have any evidence of that. And so far, it seems to me that this is simply Islamophobia. Um, I don't see similar websites around kosher certification organisations um, or fair trade organisations. So the same argument can be made about a fair trade organisation. Not all fair trade certifying organisations are charities. Um, some of them aren't. And the profits they make from fair trade certification, we don't necessarily have any say about where they go to and what they fund. Um, but there is never any suggestion that they're going to terrorists or causes that we should be concerned about purely because they're not Muslim. And so this linking of Muslim to terrorism, I find, based on no, no evidence at all, I find disturbing. Um, the other thing that comes up a lot on Halal Choices, but also to a lesser extent on the Q Society website, is that they say that, you know, um, these certification schemes are not limited to food alone, with products and services ranging from halal certified cosmetics to water, trucks, warehousing and Sharia finance. There is no limit to the schemes. Um, and they uh, say this, no other religious group imposes it, um, this on our supply chain. Um, particularly on the, halal, on the Halal Choices website, they uh, try to make a slippery slope argument that this is a thin end of the wedge and that once these Halal certification schemes um, become widespread enough that this will push out from food into other areas and will be uh, a way of trying to push, essentially push Sharia law on us by stealth. Now there's a few problems with this. Firstly, um, Sharia law in large part is completely compatible with Western de democracy. That does not sound like the kind of thing you're going to see on these websites. But a lot of Sharia law is simply telling tells Muslims what to do. And um, it doesn't necessarily impose, like, so with the food type stuff, um, there is animal cruelty issues. And I have actually a big issue with that, but I think that's separate. So with a lot of these things, like the dairy companies, etc., um, and chocolate manufacturers, their halal food imposes nothing on me. I can eat that quite happily, it doesn't change my lifestyle. And so their Sharia law about the way that food needs to be prepared has no impact on my life. Um, and that essentially is the argument against this slippery slope thing, is that I am happy for the Islamification of our society insofar as it has no impact on my life. They can Islamify the food chain as much as they like, as long as that makes no difference, as far as I can tell, to the food that I'm eating. They can Islamify as much as they like within the homes of Muslims. That's okay. And the point where I will oppose it is when it is trying to force something on me which actually has an impact. Now, the response to this that you'll often hear is the one about um, the Nazis. The Nazis needed to be stopped early rather than late. And it's the whole, you know, first they came for the such and suches and I did nothing because I wasn't. And then they came for the, and by the time they came for me, um, you know, there was nobody there to protect me. Um, and that is a classic slippery slope argument done wrong is that you need to stop people when they do something wrong. And I agree. Um, if the first step is for them to just bring in some certification schemes, which are of a small financial impact to the companies, in fact, actually, m m 
Australia exports a lot of food, um, a fair amount of food, and there are a lot of export dollars coming from that. And so our, our society actually benefits a lot from having food producers being halal certified. So at this point, I see no reason to object to it. Um, that is not a blanket um, check for the Islamification of our um, society. And the fact that there's only 2% of Australians are um, Muslims suggests they've got a long way to go if they think that imposing Sharia law is actually what they're going to be doing. So all in all, I find the Q Society and the related Halal Choices websites to be deeply Islamophobic and fighting over something which is of such small potatoes. So anyway, let me know what you think, leave a comment below, uh, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.